I'm back with another microphone comparison and overview. This time, the PreSonus PD70, which is a new-ish broadcast dynamic microphone. These microphones are popular choices for this use case because dynamic microphones tend to be more forgiving of acoustically challenged recording environments. And the broadcast style with these yokes makes them very easy to position. And they also maybe look a little bit better on camera than those handheld stage dynamic microphones. In this video, we'll do some different tests and comparisons with this microphone and also compare it to the Shure SM7B and the Rode PodMic. So check the playhead below if you wanna skip around to different parts of the video. Let's go ahead and start with what comes with the microphone. This won't take long because not much comes with the microphone. Here's the box. And aside from the microphone, there's some documentation in here, which I haven't even opened up. You also get a 5 8 to 3 8 inch thread adapter to adapt it to different stands or boom arms. It has this nice foam windscreen, which just slides off. It's a really good windscreen. It's very thick and dense foam. And you can see here that it also has this metal mesh grill underneath, very much reminiscent of the SM7B. As for build quality, it is seemingly very well built. You could easily use it to bludgeon someone to death if the need should ever arise. It definitely subscribes to the dietary regimen of the Rode PodMic in that it weighs about 25 pounds. I don't know how they pack so much stuff in here to make it weigh that much, but it's a very heavy microphone. As a result, build quality does seem to be really high, although I've only had this microphone for a short period, so I can't exactly say how long it's gonna last. It seems like it's gonna last a while. One neat thing that I like about it is the yoke is only one-sided so it doesn't have you know the thing going around the other side so you only have to loosen one adjustment knob in order to change the position of the microphone it's kind of a nice little touch something different styling wise it does have that stubby back end of the Rode pod mic combined with that elongated front end that long windscreen of the Shure SM7B otherwise it has a very matte black finish reminiscent of the SM7B other than that it just has a badge and the name of the microphone on it. It's very simple. There's no switches or buttons on the microphone, just the XLR port on the bottom of it. As for technical specifications, PreSonus doesn't really offer a whole lot of information about this microphone. So as always, I'm only testing this microphone for this voiceover type application. So if you're interested in trying it out for music, like miking instruments or even singing, I think it's gonna work for those just fine, but I can't really offer you a whole lot of detail information. PreSonus just doesn't have that information available. What they do have is a frequency response chart, which you can check out here. This pretty much tells you what you need to know about how this microphone is gonna sound. It's relatively flat all the way up to about 10, kilohertz i think it is okay i'm not looking at the chart right now but after that it does get boosted pretty heavily so it is emphasizing those very high frequencies which as you can probably hear makes this microphone very detailed and crisp sounding especially for a dynamic microphone and let me just say for this video i'm running this microphone and all the other microphones i'm going to be testing right into the roadcaster pro i'm not doing any processing so they're all in their in the dynamic microphone setting. And the only thing I'll do to the microphones is just boost the levels and posts so that they are evenly loud and loud enough for YouTube. Okay, so let's go ahead and get into some of the tests of the microphone, starting with plosives. Peter Parker prefers the pod mic for podcasts. Peter Parker prefers the pod mic for podcasts. Peter Parker prefers the pod mic for podcasts. Next, let's do some off axis rejection. So listen for how the volume drops off as I rotate the microphone, but also listen to see how whether and how much it changes the tone of my voice. If a microphone doesn't change the tone of your voice as it's hitting the microphone capsule from different angles, that's a good thing. So here we go. I'm just gonna rotate the microphone around. This is me talking into the front of the PD70 and now talking into the side of it. This is me talking into the side of the PreSonus PD70, now rotating around to the back three quarters of the microphone and finally into the very rear of the PreSonus PD70 and going to rotate back around to the front of the PreSonus PD70. Listen for how much it drops the volume, but also how much it changes the tone. All right, so now let's go ahead and test the proximity effect of the PreSonus PD70. So I've been speaking a little bit more than a fifth distance away from the microphone, and now I'm just going to lean in and talk right into the top of the windscreen where I can basically smell all the carcinogens that are probably gonna give me cancer eventually, so I hope you appreciate what I'm doing for you. This is what it sounds like. 
when you get right on top of the PreSonus PV70. The last thing is a handling test. So as you can see, it's on a desktop mic stand. So if I tap on the desk, this is how much it is picking up that sound. And if I tap on the base of the stand, this is how that sounds, tapping on the stem of the stand. And now I'm going to tap on the microphone itself so you can hear how well it does or doesn't reject all of that noise. I wanna do some live comparisons. I'm not sure how well this is gonna work on camera, but I figured I'd try it. So let's go ahead and pull down the Rode Pod mic. I think it's in, yeah, channel two. So again, just to reiterate, all these microphones are running into the Rodecaster Pro with no cloud lifter. You can see my cloud lifter is not hooked up, nor is the Clark Technic. So the gain is being provided solely by the Rodecaster. The PreSonus PD70's gain level is set to 45. The pod mics is set to 44, both in their dynamic settings. And the faders are both set to the same level between the second and third topmost notch. So you can hear how they sound. This is the Rode pod mic. And now this is back to the PD70. I'm trying to be relatively the same distance and positioning from both microphones. So this is the PD70. And now this is back on the Rode pod mic. So which one do you prefer? I don't know. <laughs> you tell me. $100 broadcast dynamic microphone, $130 broadcast dynamic microphone. Let's move the pod mic out of here and pull up the Shure SM7B. Let me go back here. Okay, so here we are on the SM7B. It is in the flat mode, so the, the high pass filter and the presence boost are not enabled. I'm trying to be around the same distance from this microphone too. And the gain level on the SM7B is set to 48, so it's a bit higher than both the PD70 and the pod mic, but the fader is the same as the other two microphones. So this is the Shure SM7B. And now we're back on the PreSonus PD70, so you can hear that even though they look very similar, <laughs> they don't sound very similar at all. So this is the PD70. And now this is the Shure SM7B. How do you think they sound? How do they compare? Which do you prefer? What are the differences between them? I'm gonna go ahead and switch the presence boost on to see if that makes it sound more like the PD70 or I don't think it's going to, but here we go. Zoop. All right, so now the presence boost has been enabled on the Shure SM7B. So boosting up those high frequencies, I don't really know what frequencies it's boosting. I guess I could take a look at the frequency response chart. Maybe I'll put that on the screen here if you really care. You probably don't. This is the Shure SM7B with the presence boost enabled. And now back on the PD70. Doesn't have any switches. This is just what the PD70 sounds like straight out of the microphone. PD70 and the Shure SM7B with the presence boost enabled. All right, so let's go ahead and wrap up this video. I'm gonna give you some of my thoughts about this microphone. Starting with the value, I do think for a broadcast dynamic microphone, it is a pretty decent value. It is more expensive than the pod mic, but of course it's a lot cheaper than the SM7B. I do think it looks nice. It's very understated, kind of classic looking like the SM7B. Build quality is really good. The foam windscreen is really nice as well. As far as sounds, of course that's subjective and there's never a one size fits all or right answer for a microphone. You really just have to compare different microphones and think about how they're gonna sound on your voice. And if at all possible, just try some different microphones if you can. My opinion on the microphone is that it is a pretty nice sounding microphone. It has a lot of clarity and detail, especially for a dynamic microphone. That is pretty much a result of those boosted high frequencies. As a consequence though, for my voice in particular, I do think it's a, a bit sibilant. So it definitely emphasizes those S's and C's that I think my voice has naturally. So it's not a really great fit, so I'd have to do some work in order to take those out of the microphone. Also, it doesn't have a whole lot of like presence and oomph in the low end. Um, it's just kind of weak sounding in my opinion. That's just how it sounds for me. It could totally be different for you and you might not even be looking for that. In comparison to the pod mic, I do think it sounds more natural than the pod mic because it doesn't really get boosted or sculpted in any way until the much higher frequencies, whereas the pod mic has a low frequency boost, a mid frequency boost and high frequency boosts. But if you do want something that sounds more exciting out of the microphone or more unique and interesting straight from the microphone without having to do anything, I think the pod mic offers you that. Whether you like that sound or not is gonna, is gonna depend on you. In comparison to the SM7B, it's a completely different sounding microphone. They might look similar, but they don't sound very similar at all. This is much brighter, 
more detailed and maybe a little bit clearer sounding, whereas the SM7B can be a little bit dark and muddy. But this is completely lacking that really low end, rich, warm tone that the that I think a lot of people gravitate to the SM7B because of. <laughs> that was horrible English. Let me know what you think in the comments if you thought it sounded good, how you thought it compared to those other two microphones that I compared it to. So that's it. I really appreciate you watching this video. Hopefully you got something out of that. Maybe it helped you out in some regard if you're looking for microphones like this. And if you wanna watch more videos about microphones, maybe check out this playlist here where I have compiled every video that I've done about microphones, audio equipment, and things like that. Okay, appreciate it. See you later.